All right. Thank you very much, Ashley. Well, just an hour ago, Deutsche Telekom AG announced that it doubled its quarterly profits. Good news for investors and important news for customers. Deutsche already operates T-Mobile USA and is now potentially looking to buy Sprint. But in the wacky world of wireless Sprint today, it also has its own deal-making going on. Sprint announced yesterday an agreement with Clearwire and a consortium of media companies to build a high-speed wireless Internet service better known as WiMAX. WiMAX is billed as the next great thing and here to guide us through its value and untangle the connections in this wireless deal-making world is Michael Nelson. He's a senior VP of Standard Group. And also joining us is Ari Zoldan. He's the Quantum Network's founder and the chief technology officer of WiMAX.com. Did I say Stanford Group? Stanford Group, Yeah, yes. I'm sorry. I no apologize there. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. Thanks for joining good morning. us. Good morning. Okay, Michael, first of all, talk to me about the implications of this big deal or this consortium that was announced yesterday between Sprint Nextel and Clearwire and some other big-name tech companies. Sure. It's really significant for all parties involved. This is one of the few, I think, win-win situations all around. You know, for Sprint, it significantly reduces the risk to build out this network. They raised $3.2 billion in outside funding. They were going to previously spend $5 billion of their own capital, so that's significant for them. For Clearwire, it's clearly transformational. Intel, it gives them the opportunity uh, to duplicate the success they had with Wi-Fi and embed WiMAX chipsets into the laptop computers. Google gives them an open, ac open access platform for the cable companies. It really gives them the key piece of the puzzle that they've been missing from the, uh, from the bundle to compete against their fiercest rivals, uh, Verizon, AT&T, and that's, wi uh, that's the wireless data. And uh, WiMAX gives them the opportunity to potentially have a two- to three-year time-to-market advantage over AT&T and Verizon. All right, all right, let me turn to you for a moment. Let's explain to our viewers for just a second. Uh, this could potentially give Sprint a great strategic advantage, although Verizon and AT&T are very much in this game. They were probably hyperventilating yesterday. Uh, but what exactly is the difference between WiMAX and Wi-Fi? Um, Wi-Fi... Um Wi-Fi operates on the 802.11 frequency. WiMAX operates on the 802.16 frequency. What does that mean? We basically, we, we take Wi-Fi and we can now call it, WiMAX is Wi-Fi on speed or Wi-Fi on steroids. It's a next generation technology. Faster. Significantly faster. If we're driving a Toyota now, now with Wi-Fi, we'll be driving a Ferrari with WiMAX. Okay, and in essence what it does is you can be on a mobile device in almost any location and this WiMAX infrastructure can reach out to more locations than the existing Wi-Fi infrastructure. Correct. We're talking about incredible speeds, approximately 7 megabytes per second. We're talking about uh, a range of approximately 30 miles. So we're talking about an entire landscape is going to be covered with this technology. Uh, and it's going to change the technological landscape uh, as we know it today. How does this situation with Sprint announcing this deal in the midst of growing rumors and speculation that Deutsche Telekom may be interested in buying Sprint or that Sprint may consider selling off their Nextel unit, how does that affect all that? I mean, at the margin, it may make it a little bit more likely because, again, it now defrays the cost of that $5 billion spend that they were previously uh, guided towards. You know, although I still think that the, the possibility of them spinning off Nextel or, merge or, or being acquired by Deutsche Telekom, while possible, is not probable. All right, Ari, right. your company, I would imagine, is a beneficiary of the announced consortium, the deal yesterday. What exactly does your company do, and, and why might you be a big beneficiary of this? Oh, it's phenomenal. Uh, Quantum Networks builds infrastructure for WiMAX technology. So we do the deployment, we put in the infrastructure, we put the equipment in, allocate the spectrum, uh, and put the entire package together to go ahead and sell it to the large carrier. So this is actually wonderful news for the company. You know, um, uh, Michael, there's a lot of talk about what's going on in the management suite at Sprint and what it is that Hess is doing right now to turn the tables, made some very, very aggressive moves right out of the gate. Talk about some of those moves and how this might change the way people view this company. Sure. I mean, we have been extremely impressed with uh, Dan Hesse's uh, at least initial strategy and vision for the company. I think he's the first uh, executive over the last couple of years in senior management at, at Sprint that actually 
gets it. And you know, the vision that he's laid out is to improve customer service, improve the marketing message. You know, those are really the two areas of concern to really improve their core fundamentals, the core wireless business. So right now it seems like he's placed the proper strategy. Now it's about executing against that strategy. And Ari, just for us in terms of the future, do you believe that WiMAX right now is the most innovative product? And if you're one of the cable companies or you're a Verizon or AT&T, did yesterday's deal just hurt you or just fuel the fire that this is the direction we need to go in? There's no question that this is the direction. Um, there's also uh, speculation that this is also very disruptive technology as well because you're going to talk about, you're talking about now competing with the cellular network. So I think at the end of the day, um, the subscriber base um, is obviously is going to grow and prices are going to come down significantly for the end user. What do Verizon and AT&T do? Yeah, they're, they're, in a, they're still in the position of power. I mean, what this does is potentially put them two to three years behind on rolling out a fourth generation network. But in terms of their core business, they're still, they're still clearly market leaders. All right, Michael and Ari, thank you very much. Thank Great you. to be here.